Welcome back to Hollywood Interviews, y'all. I'm Nerdy Dustin, here with Noah Drake Bell, and our guest today, Alex Kirsting. How you doing today, bud? I'm doing good, man. How you guys doing today? Can't complain? No, real good. It's Saturday, it's hanging good. out with some buddies, talking about movies. Can't, can't get any better than that. It really can't. Can it? No. Like, no. It's an ideal Saturday. Exactly. It is. It really is. It is the best. Uh, Alex, first question I ask my guests are, how'd you get started in this wacky world of film and television? Uh, I mean, I just kind of always loved entertaining people and trying to make people laugh. So I really just kind of fell into it and started taking a couple classes and got a couple lucky breaks, you know, meeting my agents, um, connecting with friends who had their own projects and they happen to need a, a bigger guy to be the funny person or the guy that just gets his ass kicked randomly. That's, that was always me. And then I really just kind of looked into butter, which thankfully is doing surprisingly well, uh, despite pandemic still technically going on. True. Yes. Butter is a fantastic movie. I absolutely love it. Um, it was good. So the minute I got done watching butter, uh, it, it, I instantly went to Facebook, befriended Alex, <laughs> And messaged him, I love the movie. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. Y'all got to check it out. Um, that's stalker level 5,000, y'all. That's the yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. I, that's like, he's, one of, he's one of the cool stalkers. Like, I, I've had some weird ones. Like, I've had some random people send me messages. It's just, okay. I would love to just to, to do that, a segment on random stalkers. That's going to be a whole, whole separate series. <laughs> stalker <laughs> stories. When we uh, first... Back. When we first got into show business, me and Noah, the first thing Noah tells me is like, dude, so my end goal isn't to win an Oscar. It's not to work with De Niro. I want a stalker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just a pen pal, too. <laughs> a stalker slash a pen pal, you know? That's yeah, so, so, it, something in that, in that area. Something like that, you know? I don't care if you cut out letters out of a magazine. Make it creative. What do you want? Whatever you want to do. Um, so uh, my question to you, Alex, is uh, so, you know, you kind of told us how you got into film and television. So a lot of the people that watch our show are, you know, aspiring actors, actresses, mm -hmm. either be a writer, something inside of the um, Hollywood machine. So uh, you're leaning towards acting, but do you ever have any aspirations of maybe doing any writing, directing? Is acting your passion or do you want to maybe eventually see yourself in a different role, maybe uh, behind the camera? Um, I, I, I actually uh, very much enjoy writing. It's very therapeutic for me. Yeah. So um, I've written a few things, a couple episodes of a web series that may or may not ever get released because of some other behind the scenes issues that really don't need to be going into right <laughs> now. But, um, you know, I, I, I've written, I've directed my own little skits and, you know, it, it's fun. I don't think I have quite the discipline yet to go all right let's go full on movie let's do a whole short film let's I can do this like I don't yeah. feel ready for that I feel like I can maybe write something that'd be good but directing is a whole other discipline that I know for a fact I'm not ready for but you know who knows 10 years from now five years from now how uh, a, a week from now who knows if the right idea comes along and I'm just so passionate about it you know stranger things have happened Absolutely. Um, it's good to dabble in all of it. When I was first on set as a, just a background artist, as an extra, I sort mm -hmm. of see what all of the process entails. And I kind of recommend everybody, maybe even if they're getting into acting, try a little background work first, because you can kind of see what the pieces are, because, you know, mm -hmm. the movie is a thousand different pieces moving at a thousand different angles. And it's like almost a stroke of genius and luck to get all the pieces in the right place kind of like butter i mean that's you know when when lightning strikes it strikes and you can feel it and that's kind of my favorite thing about cinema is when when it's right but when it's bad sometimes it's really bad but it's also so bad it's good like showgirls and movies like that these cult classics right. uh yeah no thank you that's because i do want people to to sort of connect with every guest that we have and mm -hmm. um you know a lot of folks look up to you that's that's 100 percent the truth especially with this film I, we talk about it online and, and things so uh, what you're doing in this film specifically is, is great for a lot of people so i just wanted to give you that little bit of uh, applause well thank you for the applause and i i completely agree with you on everyone should do at least 
get get at least one day of experience as a background artist just so you can be on set and see is this something i actually enjoy because some sets are incredibly toxic some are just a hilarious roller coaster of fun <laughs> and games it's a grab bag but if you can if you still enjoy it after being on a really toxic set then you're probably I don't want to say meant to be in the industry, but you're definitely somebody who should not stop pushing creatively. That's a great piece of advice, actually. Yeah, that's that's perfect. I agree completely. Yeah, that's my number one advice when someone's like, I want to get into acting. How do I do it? Go be a background extra at least once. Yeah, to get the, the full on experience. Um, all right. So you get to uh, act with one of my favorite actors, uh, McKetty Williams. And how was that? Oh God, I love Michael T. Michael T was so, such a good guy. So cool. Um, Cause I grew up watching Forrest Gump literally the day before the first day of school. That was like the tradition I had for middle school up until I think freshman year, because it was always on TV that day. And so I was kind of just bonding over him, just trading some stories just cause I loved his character in that movie. And I also loved him in heat too, but. Oh yeah. I guess he would, I'm. Uh, he ended up doing the movie, A, because the timing worked out great because we were shooting it between Thanksgiving and Christmas of 2018. So he didn't really have anything set up. So great little extra income. It's a short movie, you know, a few days of work. And he's working with one of his friends, Paul, who is our director. And I guess Paul showed him my screen test. And because of how I did in the screen test, he's like, I, I got to be part of it. Oh, and that was... Awesome. Like I was almost in tears. Like I, I almost had to leave the room because like somebody I admire, somebody I respect as not just a person, but as an artist wants it, wanted to work with me. That's awesome. Like that, that there is no better feeling like, yeah. you know, life complete goal, career done. I'm, I'm good. It's one of those, it, it was one of those feelings. And he was just very, very supportive. Like we were constantly talking behind the scenes, just very friendly. We never talked into, he was never very like, I want to talk about politics or whatever, you know, crap was going on in life. There's always something like, how's your family doing? How are you handling it? Like he knew I was out here. I was out in uh, Santa Clarita where, where we shot everything by myself. And we were shooting it between the holidays. So being away from family for that one month, True. Being the lead in the movie, working 12, 13, 16 hour days plus, it's it's a lot to handle, especially on somebody who's young and inexperienced. So he was he was very much, I don't want to say babysitting, but very, uh, very conscientious of where I was at mentally. And I think he kind of helped push Mira and Brian, who played uh, my mom and dad, to like, let's make sure this guy doesn't go crazy because we know this business is going to make people go crazy. Yes. It sure does. Uh, yeah. The 16 hour days, that's, yeah, those are, yeah. No, I, th I think there was one day where we had, I think close to 20 hours. And that was, that was, I was lucky because it was one of the, it was one of the scenes near the end where, uh, where all the doctors come in and stuff. So I really didn't have to do anything. I was falling asleep. It was mm -hmm. an easy day for me. Everyone else was like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <sighs> Got it. Yeah, we, uh, so uh, me and Noah work on the Righteous Gemstones. And the season two, the season finale, we were doing tiling. Um, and we did, yeah, those were 16-hour days. And it was just, you know, us moving from one spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot. And it's, yeah, it's, I, <sighs> I love the industry, but I don't love 16 hour days. <laughs> yeah. Those, those are never fun. No. See, for me, it's opposite. I'm so used to working this like weird, I mean, I'm in the hotel business, hospitality business. So mm. that's just that you got to be crazy mental to be in because it doesn't shut down. It's not like it closes at five o'clock hotels stay open all the time. So I'd no, much I agree. 16 hours on um, something I love like movies, like even the tiling. I'm like, yes, where am I going next? Yes. You still get a couple, a couple nice, you know, you crafties there and you get some, some meals and you get some cool opportunities or whatever. But, um, uh, so Butter's a fantastic film. 
it is getting a lot of uh, awards recognition like it should. What do you think that most audiences are connecting with when they're watching Butter? I think most people are just connecting with the characters because the way Paul and Aaron, the writer of the book, they worked really closely together to make sure that the characters felt real and authentic. And they yeah. feel real and authentic in the book alone, but transferring that to a screenplay can be very, very daunting. Like it's failed numerous times in you know blockbuster movies, but yeah. this being an indie, Paul and Aaron really took their time to make sure these people felt real. You could connect with them. They had something you're just like, that, that's me. That was me in high school. Or like, I, I wish I had a teacher like that. Or I wish I had a friend like that. Or no, that, that was my sister. My sister went through that. And, you know, I've, I've had messages um, that are just almost heartbreaking at times there's some very inspirational and I don't always respond to some of these messages just cause it's a lot. And, you know, I, I'm sorry if people are watching this, like you didn't message me back. Like I, 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 it's not that I don't want to, it's, I can't for every single one, it's a lot to handle. Um, but you know, it's it, you, these people feel real. And I think that's what people are connecting with. Uh Absolutely. And, and you sort of answered my other question is how I imagine you do have a lot of fans that send these heartfelt messages of, you know, you know, the, the highlights and then the low light. And for any actor, for anyone that takes on a role like this, you, you're going to live with that probably for the rest of your life, I would imagine. Yeah, I, and, you know, I, and I welcome the messages because some of them are fantastic. Some are a little weird and out there because they're just like, I just like movies and cool but when there's something that somebody just pulls at your heartstrings and they had such a strong reaction to the movie those are the interactions that you can tell sometimes you just have to respond because yeah. it will make their day and it will make them you know believe that there's still some humble people in hollywood which is well that's also a great point that's kind of why we do this show as well we we also try we've talked to you know grips we've talked to mm -hmm. uh, PAs because we want everyone to know everything not just the highest directors you know and that's kind of why I like indie films personally um, a blockbuster is nice but you're not going to connect certainly on the same level as I mean like Spider-Man No Way Home awesome film you know was it emotional Fantastic. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't compare the two, um, obviously. But um, would you ever see yourself or would you ever want to work on something like a big blockbuster Marvel film? God, yes, dude. I'm yeah. a huge right. Marvel. I'm a huge comic book fan, dude. There I was, we go. Now, I was hey, laughing whole, my whole ass off at Peacemaker while we were doing like the original run of press when Butter was going out to theaters. Um, and then I was kind of trash talking to Batman because that's the reason Butter kind of got pulled out of theaters. We came out the week before the Batman and none of the theaters were like, oh, well, it was a good first weekend. Later, <laughs> let's just move. Let's just keep another pa uh, Battinson theater open for just in case. And you know, rightfully so, because that's also a really good movie. But it hurts the indie film market when that happens. And it it's, does. I mean, it, it, me and Paul had no control over it. Like nobody really had any control over it as far as I'm aware of specifics, but you know, it's, it's unfortunate that it happened, but you, you still, I still loved the movie. I still loved every other movie that's come out that I've seen since then. It's like, I don't, it's just the way the business works sometimes. True. Very true. Very true. All right. Uh, okay. So what are you got, what are you working on next? What do you got planned for your, uh, for your career next? Uh, well, I know there's a movie in the pipeline. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I, cause I signed my, my NDA, so I can't really say <laughs> too much. Something I shot out here in Vegas where I live. Um, so I was very, very lucky. I only had, I only had to work one day on it, so I'm not in it for a lot, but I'm, significant enough to the role or to the plot of the movie i'm like you can't cut around me yes <laughs> yes and it was just it was it was so fun because i got to improvise and on butter i never really had a chance to improvise there's literally only one scene in the movie where i feel no that was that was me i was that was 100 me and luckily that one made the trailer but 
with this next movie, it was all do whatever you want, follow the script for a couple takes and then have fun. And I loved that. I loved that. That's the best. Oh, yeah. I suppose the butter is based off a book and, and it's, but it's weird because most indies I've worked on, uh, the directors are like, all right, this we're, we're doing the script, but then let's improvise some stuff here. So it's, it's weird that, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Nice well, no, fact. I mean, it, Paul, the director wasn't like, wasn't opposed to improvising. He was opposed to improvising too much. And I have an issue, um, at least I did at the time. I don't know if I still do. Um, basically, like I wouldn't be in character when I improvise. It'd all be me, Alex, improvising, not butter, making mm-hmm. some shit up. And that's where he had an issue with. So like when I, where I was doing a scene with uh, Ravi Patel, who played Doc Bean, he did something different literally every single take. <laughs> Like me and Mira were trying not to crack up. Like I'm biting the inside of my cheek in every scene I did with him because I just couldn't stop laughing. He was just so naturally funny. There's something about the way he enters a room. It's just, you, you light up, you can't help but smile and smirk and laugh. Um, and for a few, few takes, I was able to improvise with him. And Paul's like, no, you, you, I like what you're doing. Follow the script just so we can get out of here. I think I kind of caused one of those 20 hour days because <laughs> I was just having too much fun and like, fine, whatever. Sorry guys. It's like being on set with like Dami Bride and Walton Goggins and all of them for the rest of the time. It's a fat, it's one take and then 20 improvised takes. Mm-hmm. Um, and when like a film, like you can kind of feel, feel when it's too much, there's the fine line when it comes to improvisation, you know, like you can feel that, Hey, they just let the actors go with it. You know, it's that give and take balance, which is, uh, you know, butter strikes it perfectly. Um, you mentioned comic books and Marvel and everything. We are also gigantic Marvel fans. We can just do a whole movie on Marvel. I know that um, some of my idols too are like uh, Kevin Smith and Jason Muse. And I think they yes. did you work with Jason. I worked with Jason on the first movie I ever did. It still hasn't come out yet. Um, another little indie horror movie. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to work with him on screen. I, I think I met him or saw him around, but I didn't have actually like on screen time with him. So I couldn't connect. And this was before I even knew, like I knew of Jay and Silent Bob, mm-hmm. but I didn't like know about Jay and Silent Bob. So yeah. it was... Like, oh, just another guy. And I said, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Not realizing it's Jason Muse. <laughs> it's Muse. <laughs> like, and, awesome. and it's, it's hilarious, too, because um, my dad actually ran into Kevin Smith at one of his jobs. And his name is also Jay. So, of course, he had to get a picture of Jay and Silent Bob. And that's awesome, dude. They started talking about, you know, the industry and business just shooting the shit, really. Kevin Smith just seems so down the down to earth and super humble. Like I'd love to work with that guy. Us too. He's for, way I mean, for multiple for multiple reasons. Like he's on my list for you know stoner flicks and anything. But yeah, I just want to have dinner with him. Truthfully, he seems like such a cool dude. Right. I met him once, and it was yeah. He is the most down to earth dude. So cool, uh, Kevin. If you're watching, because I know you watch our show, you should cast all of us in your next movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I didn't think the video turned out to be that, but that's exactly where it is now. No, no, I would. Uh, I've, I've got a trip planned to LA. I've never been there before. And one of the reasons I picked hiking to the Hollywood sign, because A, it's like awesome. But B, I was like, maybe I'll see Kevin Smith on my hike. You never there. know, man. You never know. Like, I, I want to do the hike too, I, but because I live in Vegas, it's not, it's a bit of dry. It's a bit too much of a drive for yeah. me just for a hike true true it is a yeah I'm, I'm flying out there from charleston and you know just doing the whole tourist thing but i'm like yeah hey, you know what? have fun man have fun you, you if you're all out there you got you got to do it you got to do it at least once and yeah, or the scum and villainy bar you know because that's where um that and mark bernard and do fat man on batman so maybe oh that's they're just legends man legends and a oh, stone stoner flick with him like a comic book movie would be great like if you're on a, a guest on the flash when he episode when he does a guest director but it'd be uh-huh. old you know mall rats too that's what i'm talking about like oh yeah absolutely 
Oh, absolutely. I, 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 I cannot wait for Clerks 3 to come out. Yes. I, so the, second he, the second he announced it, I was like, I told my agent, you, if you hear any rumors that this is the movie that they are casting, put me up for it. I don't care what the role is. I don't yep. care if I, you know, the dead guy, somebody else in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't care. I want to be in a Kevin Smith movie. Damn straight. Absolutely. You know, nothing, nothing happened yet. So um, still waiting What's on that? that phone call, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Come Come on, on. We, know you're, we know you're watching, Kevin, so make it happen. <laughs> but Alex in your next movie. Yeah, Clerks 3, I'm ready for. And what makes – like, it's done. He's done with the movie. It's ready to go. Like, let's do it. Let's watch it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm ready. Um, yeah, that's right. You're – um. Oh, what is – it's it, – it, Ah, Roaches? Is that what that's what the movie's called, right? Yeah, it was uh, called All Roach, basically Roach, about yeah. um like these ancient cockroaches that are like man eating, flesh eating, whatever. And it was it was it's such a weird concept for a movie, but it's so terrifying is the concept of it because I was I, I wish I could see what the animation looks like on some of the stuff just because. I want to know because it was so early in my career. I don't know how good of a job I did as a performer, but I've made some lifelong friendships with some of the other actors on that movie. And it just, I, I want to see the final product. I want to know, you know, what, what does it, this look like? I, I need to know because this, this was the most special effects I, I dealt with in a movie at the time. Like there were CGI, they're supposed to be CGI. There's, green screen we were working on i don't know fake blood um you know prosthetics all that stuff and i have no idea what it looks like because like, i never got to see actual footage well, That's a be. Lot of people, yeah people don't understand like when we're done with the project we don't get to see it <laughs> yeah I don't know what happens it could be joe's apartment or mimic you know <laughs> you don't know where the roaches would, would lie in there Exactly. Um, exactly. Nice um, mimic drop because he just played a movie with uh, Mira. Wasn't she in Mimic? <laughs> yeah, was she but, in Mimic? I yeah, think she was. was. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I'll always drop Mimic because I'm also a huge Guillermo del Toro fan. So, and Del Toro, that's one of his first movies, I believe, was Mimic. Um, but that leads me to. Uh, probably my final question and again so you mentioned you kind of want to see it because it came out early in your career do you find that you watch rewatch your past performances to sort of critique yourself and um can you sort of expound upon that because like i said i i've done that i i'll go back and watch some of my previous some actors mm -hmm. will not watch anything they've done They're like nope i won't even touch it are you in the that camp or will you go back and kind of watch it and see where you can improve on the next role um, I'm, I don't, I don't like watching myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed that the first time I saw butter, it's like, I, like everyone else was telling me, oh, you did so good. You did so good. Like, no, because I, I think Matt LeBlanc put it best in the friends reunion. Like, because I know I'm acting, I know it's bullshit. Yeah. So yeah. I don't believe anything I, I'm watching when it's me. So I can't, I can't do that. And I'm kind of the same way. Like I've seen butter shoot probably 20 30 times at this point just of all the other screenings and film fests that we've managed to get into but like I, i'm kind of numb to myself in the movie now mm -hmm. but you know i want to see all roads just because i want to see the movie because that was that was literally the first movie i actively auditioned for i worked my butt off for at that audition like I was willing to do whatever I needed for a part and it gave me a better part because of the audition. So I want to see, did I do a good enough job to earn it? That, that's my attitude. If that oh, makes no. sense. Well, no, that makes sense. That makes complete sense actually. Yeah. Wow. But you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of those people like I gotta, I gotta watch my movies. Like, no, I, I, I don't really want to watch myself because I might, I'm a huge critic of myself. I'm very, very hard on myself. And that's very, very uh, not good for my mental health. Sure. So, yeah. like, I'll watch it, you know, when I'm supposed to. 
like, you know, we're going to the film fest in Napa Valley. Like, I've never been out there, so maybe I'll go enjoy it there. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, we're doing a film fest in New York. We've never been to New York. Why not? We're going to film fest in Vegas. I live there. I don't need to see it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'll skip that one. <laughs> But no, I mean, I, I I went to the movie out here when it premiered um, in Vegas. But no, it was um, it's just a, I, I just it's weird watching yourself. It feels very masturbatory in a sense, like sure, it's, yeah. it's just stroking the ego, and like my ego is pretty <laughs> minimal, so I don't need to, you know, I don't need to do anything with that. I just need. I, I want to work. I want to just give me the next, give me the next job, so I don't have to worry about seeing yeah, the old stuff. Yeah, me and I, you are the complete opposite. I don't really like watching myself. Noah's all for it. <laughs> yeah, I I'm not gonna lie. There's no need to. Uh, I do, but it, you know, it just <clears throat> it's also self critique. You know, I will watch these videos back in the interviews and. Am I saying um too many times? Are there too many breaks? What could we cut? What could be more, uh, this question sort of silly or it's not connecting with the audience. But also it's just, I don't know, I'm a Scorpio. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, no I, I, there's nothing wrong with wanting to study yourself. I mean, and I do that to a point too. Like I, I've seen, I've, I've listened to old uh, interviews I've done. I've watched a couple of old interviews that I do. I'll probably watch this too just to see Am mm -hmm. I going too much in my tangent? Am I trying to go too hard to, well, whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I get, I tend to get almost obsessed with certain things after a while. And like, no, I, I, I need to fixate on something else for my sanity. So that's why I basically will do one. And then I, I got to watch something stupid and then we'll watch, you know, a, a screen rant pitch meeting or something else that's just god man if we can be anywhere i mean as creative as pitch meetings oh my right? god my, one of my guilty pleasures is just to re i mean watch and watch but rewatch. I, 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 I watched i watched the pitch meeting for morbius before i went to see morbius and i refunded my ticket just because i i don't need to see this now yep Thank that's you. right so it makes because it I brings love, out all the all the minor issues and all the major issues in the first 30 seconds sure does all it needs oh, so brilliant he's he's just so he just that's just an idea that's uh, perfect i know it, it. it's super easy barely an inconvenience yeah yeah, yeah. i do sir it's just so great it's so great um absolutely uh so we do have um like i said a few folks watching who are in the what's the best piece of advice sort of that you could have gone back to your first few interviews or your previous self that you would give a younger Alex that you know now when you started? Um, you know, just trust the process. Good. Don't yeah. think everything's just going to come handed to you. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's, but most times it's not. Um, just because you know it's happened to one actor doesn't mean it happens to all of them. Just enjoy the work that you get and continue to push for more to get better work. That's really all it, it's really all it is. And I think that's true for anybody. You you can be the you can be your first in as a background artist and walking dead, that's fine. You know, next season you could be a repeating walker that just is tormenting somebody, and you never know. It's one of those things where sometimes it works out on the same project. Sometimes you're going to get something totally out of this world that you're not going to expect, and that's happened a few times with me. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily to like a grandiose scale by any means, but. Um, but yeah, just kind of trust the process. It's nothing's going to happen overnight. There is no overnight success story in Hollywood, despite what uh, a lot of publications will have you believe. Like Kevin Hart busted his ass for 30 years before he had a major hit. And that was while he was also doing stand up. Like that, he was doing as much as he could possibly do to get to that level that, that he's at. And he's earned every little bit of it. So 
you know, I do, I would just tell myself, make sure you earn it. Uh, that's well, people give us advice all the time. And that's actually probably one of the best pieces of advice I've heard in a very long time. Heck yeah. Alex, this has been so much fun. Thank you for coming on and doing this with us. We oh, do my hope, pleasure, man. We hope to get you back on again. Uh, y'all hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So you never miss an episode of Hollywood interviews and we'll see y'all in the next video. Later y'all. Thanks Alex. Later guys.